this feel like spring day, we will enjoy it while we can because we know it's always short lived. Well, welcome to worship. We welcome everyone joining the worship service today in this Lenten season. We also welcome online worshipers with Care Center members. May the grace of God, giving you the strength and recovering true joy, be with everyone worshiping together in his healing touch, revive your souls. Uh, the Chronological Bible reading, week 11, and the Lenten Bible Study, week 5, table, are distributed in person and uploaded on Facebook. May the Holy Spirit move your heart in turn ways to his while reading the Word of God daily. Uh, during the mission and the vision to continuously impact the communities with love and messages of Jesus Christ, to revitalize and transform believers, reach friends, and renew faith by the story of Jesus. Also, our food for thought is gratitude is the noblest and greatest of human virtues. Our verse for March is, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. From Psalms 5, 3. Are there um, any messages from the church? Anybody have anything that they would like to share this morning? Any announcements? Um, I'm going to hold a, a finance meeting for all church next Sunday after church in regards to purchasing a new computer and what the options are. So anyone who would like to attend, you're more than welcome to. It shouldn't take very long. We'll just give you some information, the cost, and where the funds would come from, or if you need to do a fundraiser type thing. And uh, so it should be short and sweet, but it'll be next Sunday after service. Thank you, Lori. I hope a bunch of you will stay. It's really important for us to know kind of where we're at and all the stress Lori goes through to make things work. So. Thank you, Lord. Shall we rise for the land of Christ and truth, please?
There's nowhere, oh wait, I forgot one thing. God knows us better than we even know ourselves because, because he made us. So don't you bet there's some things in our brain that maybe we don't know yet, but God knows. And sometimes when we're afraid to do something and we think, oh, I, there's no way I can do that. God knows and he gives us the strength and the, the exactly Mundo. What's his name? Strong guy? Are you talking about my husband? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Samson. Yes, yeah, Samson. Sorry, Tim. Okay, God is always there with us and always will be. Knowing that should give us comfort and peace. The maker of the universe made you and loves you. He has granted you special gifts and has a plan for you. You don't know what that is yet, but God will be with you in it. And we know it will be a wonderful plan, just as we are wonderfully made. Let's say an echo prayer. Dear God, thank you for making us and caring for us. You understand us and know us better than we can imagine. Help us to trust in you and give thanks for your presence. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 
scripture I am reading is from Psalms 135, 1 to 5, and 15 to 21. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, our Lord is above all gods. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. And there is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become like them. O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless be the Lord from Zion, he who resides in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. be God. rise from the taxonomy. to your love and grace by giving you offerings and tithes with our love and thanks. Use this all for your joy and for those who need your saving and healing hands. 
Remember and bless with heavenly richness and abundant supplies all who gave the offerings. Let their lives be filled with love for you and serving neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While we're standing, will you pass the peace of Christ and greet each other?
concerns. Do we have any prayer requests? I'm going to try and tell you this without crying. Um, May Springs had the most terrible farm accident yesterday that killed a five-year-old boy. And he's related to the Skinners and the Houses. And it was just a real tragic happening in our community. So they need prayers. Thank you for sharing that, Eddie. Any more concerns and prayer requests this morning? How about birthdays? Any birthdays this upcoming time? Yep, my daughter Amy's birthday is Thursday. No problem. Any more? Uh, my daughter in law, her birthday is on Tuesday, and that's Daniel. Great. We got another one in the seat, baby. Oh. My sister's birthday, my younger sister, is March 7th, and we had a nice visit with her, and we called her on the phone and told her, Happy birthday. <laughs> and she says, It's just another day. I said, No, it's not. It's a special day. <laughs> Celebrating. <laughs> Just enjoying the day. Oh, great. And our grandson, that's going to be 15 on Thursday. Where did those years go? Any more? Before? Oh, wait. My daughter in law, Haley, her birthday is tomorrow. Well, March is a good one. Good one. <laughs> okay, let's all sing, Amy. <laughs> Father God, thank you for the amazing love you practiced and made it done for us through Jesus Christ. We keep in our mind your grace that always forgives, welcomes, and covers us from iniquity. We forget our mistakes and faults, but we begin to say that's okay when we return to you. If it were not for your love and mercy, we would still have been in eternal pain and despair without knowing it. Thank you again for your mercy and grace. That's our true joy and happiness. But we still need your help and guidance for living safe and healthy. Remember those who need your care and healing grace. Help them get through all physical and mental pain with hope in your mind. Also, some people believe in you and confess Jesus as their Christ are not coming to church for some reason. We may not know the exact reason, but you know their story and what they have in heart. Show your unfailing love and unending grace to them and guide them to your church again. Let us also keep stretching out our loving arms and welcoming them. Bless this village and all, all inhabitants with your supplying hands and endless love. Remember and bless our children so they can live 
successful lives in your truth and gospel. gospel. Offering our hopes and praises to you, we lift our voices speaking the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Holies is the deepest part in the tabernacle in the in the Old Testament. So, which meant, come closer, come closer, come deeper, deeper relationship with God. So, everyone is welcome. <laughs> More deeper, deeper, and closer. Okay, let's stand for the scripture reading. The scripture we are going to share today is from. The book of Leviticus 2026. 20, you shall be holy to me, 
For I, the Lord, am holy, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer again. God of truth and grace, thank you always for your word and love for us. We believe your word is life and power. Make our souls more vital and let your word work in us. Lord, speak to us. We will live by listening and doing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, starting the sermon, let's do the verse of March together. In the morning, together, in, in the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. Psalm 5, 3. Amen. Shall we do the first of January? Happy are we? <laughs> Happy, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path the sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but, 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 <laughs> our delight, <laughs> our delight is in the love of the Lord, and on His love, we meditate day and night. Psalm. <laughs> one and one and two. <laughs> okay, next Sunday I will follow you. <laughs> Ask <laughs> the first of February, <laughs> January. <laughs> uh, last Monday I got a call from a person called Dave, uh, Dave, Dave Kim, whose father was Steve Stephen Kim. He was the pastor of this church in 1977 from California. So in 1977, I was two in Korea. <laughs> Has anyone been here in 1977? Yeah. So I heard from him. His father is now, uh, now retired and he was a, a professor a professor of Claremont Seminary in San Francisco, California, and now he's re he, re he retired and enjoying his life. And I don't know how he knew our Facebook and contacted me, but I was so uh, interesting, and we talked not not too much, but <laughs> we talked some anyway. Um, in this day and age with smartphones, uh, it is rare to get lost unless we don't know how to look at the others. Uh, usually, usually we look at a map on our smartphone or call someone to find our way when, when we get lost on our way to our destination. If we date back a longer, People went to their destination using a, a compass or uh, the stars in the sky. In the case of the Israel, Israelites in Exodus, they only followed the guidance of the pillar of cloud and fire after escaping from Egypt. Uh, by the way, has, has Israel ever visited the land of Canaan before they escaped from Egypt? Uh, if they had not, I would, I, I would not have asked this question. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> they have visited there for a short while. In Genesis 50, during the, during the funeral of Joseph's father, Jacob, 
they briefly went there to bury his body. Although a long, long time had passed, uh, Joseph's sons, including Joseph, I, I mean uh, Jacob's sons, including Joseph, traveled through the wilderness by a route other than the Red Sea, and buried their father in the cave, in the cave called Machpelah in Canaan, where Abraham and Isaac were buried. But when Israel escaped from Egypt, God helped them cross the Red Sea with Moses. In fact, even though there was a faster track to the coastline, Exodus 13, 17 says that God made them detour farther into the wilderness because they would have turned their hearts and run back to Egypt if Israel were to go to war with the, with, with the Canaanites living on the, co on the coastlines. Anyway, the Israelites headed to the land of Canaan, seeing the movement of the pillar of cloud and fire. Just like that according to God's command and Moses' guidance. But it was not that they only kept moving forward. Just as we rest at least once when traveling long distances, the Israelites took one major rest in the wilderness, except when they had to rest and sleep. And that was on Mount Sinai, after crossing the Red Sea. There, while Moses went up to the mountain and was receiving the Ten, ten, the ten Commandments and the blueprint of the tabernacle from God, his brother Aaron and Israelites built a golden calf and worshipped it to soothe their anxiety and indulge in pleasure at the foot of the mountain. After, great, after the great judgment in which 3,000 people died due to the idol tree, Moses remade two stone tablets, went up, went up to the mountain to get, to get the Ten Commandments again, because Moses threw at the first Ten Commandments at uh, the uh, the golden calf. So first the ones are broken. So now he made two, two tablets again and went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments again. <coughs> After that, Israelites gathered all the materials and built a tabernacle at the foot of the mountain according to its design instructed by God. Now, while Israel was building the tabernacle, the pillar of cloud and fire would never have moved. However, that didn't mean that God's guidance for them stopped. God was always with Israel, even then. Anyway, Israel finally finished building the tabernacle. The first thing God instructed Israel through Moses right after that was how to worship God. How to worship God. He taught in detail what sacrifices to make, how to make them, and on what occasions and how to offer them. So this is the beginning of Leviticus the burnt offering, the grain offering, the fellowship offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. God consecrated and appointed Moses' brother Aaron and his sons to officiate at all the sacrifice, well, all the sacrifices, and gave detailed instructions on how to make the sacred clothes they must wear. 
When all preparations were done, Aaron finally performed the first sacrifice before the Israelites under the instruction of Moses. However, the priest had to lead the sacrifice exactly according to the regulations set by God. But there was a case where priests burned to death while offering a sacrifice by making a fire of their own accord instead of using the fire authorized by God. In Leviticus chapter 10, they were Nadab and Abihu, Aaron's first son and second, second son. So, uh, assu assuming that we are, we are among Israel, uh, what did you think if, if our stay at the mountain gets longer and such things happen? Uh, oh, how long do we have to stay here? When are, we, when are we entering at Canaan? We wish we would go quick. We would think like that too, wouldn't we? Then, how long do you know Israel did stay under the mountain? The Bible also gives the answer. Exodus 19.1 says that they arrived at Mount Sinai three months after escaping from Egypt. And Numbers 10.11 says that they departed on the 20th day of the second month of the second year after escaping from Egypt. So they departed again after about a year. In other words, it is, uh, it is, it is like uh, if, we, if we escaped from Egypt on January 1st last year, we arrived at Mount Sinai on April 1st and departed again on February 20th this year. You figured out, right? During the period, Israel received the Ten Commandments, built a tabernacle, learned to offer sacrifices, and received education about the laws they must live by in the land of Canaan. What the contents of the law say can be broadly divided into two categories. It is do it or don't do it. In particular, the words that God said don't do were about the sins of the Canaanites, because they, because they already committed all kinds of abominable sins that God hates. And the land became polluted and will vomit them out on its own. And while listing the prohibited things, there was an expression that God kept repeating. It was, I am the Lord. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. The reason God repeated it was that it was crucial and essential. It was like when Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you. Truly, truly, I say to you. He was saying something super important. The reason God gave Israel the law and repeatedly emphasized who he was, that he wanted Israel to be holy, just as he was holy. Leviticus 11.45 says, For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt, to be your God. Thus, you shall be holy, for I am holy. The part 
he emphasized while explaining this in more detail is today's text, 2026. Thus, you are to be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the peoples to be mine. This means that Israel must be holy just as he is holy. For God set them, up, set them apart from all the people in the world to be his, to be his own. The word holy itself is called kadosh in Hebrew, meaning to separate. I mentioned before that it means to distinguish and discern. Since God was the Holy One set apart Himself from a world full of, full of sin and evil, he also set apart Israel he chose and wanted them to become a holy nation, discerned from other nations full of sin. So the word, I am the Lord your God, meant this. Remember always who I am, the Lord, who chose you and set you apart. And you must always be holy, too. And there was another expression repeated. This is the one that God's commands were well carried out. And it was recorded 21 times in total, from the completion of the tabernacle to making a priest, a priest's clothes and their appointment. Exodus 40, 16 says, Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Just as the Lord commanded him. In other words, during almost a year's stay on Mount Sinai, Israel built a tabernacle and offered sacrifices as God commanded as God commanded, and was intensively educated on holiness and obedience that must be kept in mind and heart throughout the entire process. Only then could the land of Canaan be conquered and prosperous. So, the most the most urgent and important thing for the Israelites who escaped from Egypt was not to quickly arrive in the, in, in the land of Canaan, but to first listen to God's word carefully and train in holiness and obedience according to his word. So do we. We are all on a journey of faith Toward eternal heaven. This world is not the heaven, the eternal world is some, somewhere up there after our physical death. But the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of God came to us. Not whole things, but partially, so that we can taste, so that we can experience, so that we can hope for the eternal heaven. So that's what Jesus did for us. Still, the most important thing in our lives is not to get heaven quickly, but to share, share every moment with God in obedience and to walk with Him every day, enjoying the heaven that has already come into us in holiness. The most, the most precious moment, the most important moment is not yesterday, not the past, not the future, but now. But the moment that I am with the Lord. But the moment I walk, I, I walk with the Lord, I share everything with my loving Jesus. Nothing is more important in our lives than a relationship with God that is tightly bonded through 
faith, hope, and love. In life, when God's guidance is clear, we can obey without hesitation. But what should we do when there are no words or signs and we just have to stay in the same place without any guaranteed date or way? The message today's text gives us is always to remember who God is first. Which said, I am the Lord your God. I am with you. Our God is holy. So we dem- so he demands holiness, holiness from us too. We all must always be holy in God because he called us set us apart, and sanctified us to be with us. So we must repent of all our undiscerned thoughts, words, actions, and times. Not only in Lenten season, but every day. Christians are not people who do not sin but people who know how to, how to repent. No one is completely perfect and righteous. Only Jesus is perfectly righteous. As people, as holy people of God, when we, when we recognize Jesus within us every day, and live a life of worship by praising and reciting God's words. The glory of the God, the glory of God and his presence will fill our lives and families. So I want you all to experience that God's presence in your lives, in your personal place, office, school, in your house too, not only in the church. God is within us here, but God is there also, wherever you go, wherever you are. Exodus 40, 40, 33 and 34 testifies that the cloud covered the tent of a meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle when Moses had finished all the work as God had commanded. I hope and pray that our church, homes, and lives will be filled with the presence of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the glory of God. And that and that anyone who sees us, meets us, or comes in here will experience the holy presence of God as well. May the glory of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with all of us who live obediently, lifting up our thoughts, hearts, and lives to God for more discerning and holier lives. Amen? Let's pray together. Holy God, we look to you more at this time. Make us all holier as you are holy and open our eyes and ears so that we can see and hear your words more. May the Holy Spirit always help us not to deviate from your path, but to worship in your presence every day and live with greater dependence on you. May your glory fill our homes and workplaces and let us live only with gratitude, peace, and joy. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's stand for the, for the closing song. Now my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, 
All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with Thee. Close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with Thee. Not for years or worldly pleasure, not for fame my prayer shall be. <coughs> he will, I toil and suffer, only let me walk with thee. To thee, <coughs> close to thee, close to thee. Gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with thee. Lead me through the veil of shadows, bear me o'er life's fitful sea. Then the gates of life eternal, May I enter, Lord, with Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee. Then the gates of the eternal, may I enter, Lord, with close to Thee, close to Thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Then the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with thee. Uh, holiness is the power and the life that forms our identity as true Christians. Remember who God saved us is and who we are. God is holy and we are his holy people. Let's go into the world with benediction. May the grace of the Lord our Jesus Christ, the infinite love of God the Father, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with all having for the families and all churches who live in obedience by walking with the Lord in holiness to the end, now and forever. Amen. Go for and thank you for joining the service.